in addition to feeding well, there are also these rituals you can do to basically keep in good health. And some of these rituals, although this is a very old book about even older stuff, some of these rituals are still being practiced in the very day. So one of them is pouring lead. So in order to basically keep your chakras clean and like keep your karma clean, you have pieces of lead, maybe 250, 300 grams. You melt them and then you cover the sick person's head with a shawl. And then this is always done with a practiced, seasoned uh, female magician with who also trained under a similar female magician. And what she does is you put a shawl over your head, she melts the lead, okay? And then you pour the molten lead into a cup of water above the person's head. So when that, when that happens, it has like, like an explosion and it's like steam everywhere. And then when she's doing it, the lead casting lady says, this is not my hand. This is the hand of our mother, Aisha Fatma. So, very, very mystical. And obviously, this is a survival of a myth, like a survival of a ritual that's probably pagan in origin. And I, I would bet there were similar, similar rituals around in times of Christianity and even earlier. Like, this is clearly a pagan survival. This is not my hand, but it's the hand of our mother, Aisha Fatma. And then you repeat the same procedure over the patient's feet. So you pour molten, molten lead into a smaller cup and... And then you make the patient drink from the water the lead has been poured into. You don't drink the lead itself. You just drink the water it splashed into because... It's molten metal. When it falls in the water, it like flash vaporizes and freezes. So that's that. And then the remaining water, you put some bread into it. And then you give it to dogs at a crossroad. Now this is incredible. Because from what we know about pagan or even ancient Greek history... The goddess Hecate. Yeah, it's, 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 Hecate was the goddess of crossroads. And dogs were involved in some of her rituals. And it's just incredible because it's also independent corroboration. Because this book written in 1947, it's just recording the rituals of Istanbul's people. And there's no mention of Hecate or anything. We know Hecate because we read about these other allusions to roads, crossroads, and dogs elsewhere. So you give the lead water to dogs at the crossroads. Incredible. I mean, I, I just feel so great. Many people like snub these beliefs and they say, oh, it's like they, they mistakenly think it's Islamic where certainly it's far, far older and darker. It's probably the survival of a certain Hecate ritual. And then the magician lady studies the lead which froze in the water by your head and your feet. If it's in a blob, the magician will decree that it is the work of demons and jinns who have been really strongly offended or somebody has really done a bad, dark magic uh, trick on you, basically. If you see a gleaming fragment among the blob of lead, it's a sign that the patient's heart is pure and they will heal quicker. And then you must always pay the magician lady in a manner that's both proportional to her and you. So if she's a very famous magician and she's very wealthy, you can just give as much as you can. But if you're a famous and if you are a rich person, then you mustn't be skimpy. And if you're a person with meager means, you just pay what you can. 
And it's, it's one ritual like that. Okay, then there's another ritual. This is the ritual of Sharbet. The ritual of um, sweet waters. So much like the lead... By the way, do you have any similar rituals where you live? Especially if you live in the old world. I'm really curious to learn. There's another ritual in which you can, if you can't find lead, you just find a flaming piece of wood and you extinguish it in, the, in a pan of water and say, this is not my hand, this is the hand of our mother Aisha Fatma. Scary. And then, if the patient has a nervous disorder or a or a kind of psychiatric illness, there's this magic ritual called the Sherbet ritual. Basically, you take some water laced with sugar, and then you basically prepare this, like, a pitcher of water with sugar dissolved in it. And once again, everybody blows on it and says some prayers, And then at mi- after midnight, when there's nobody in the streets, you take it to a crossroads again, much like Hecate. And as you are pouring the sugar water to the road junction, you say, you call out to the spirits or secretly call out to Hecate, take my woes, give me my health. Here we are giving you the sugar water. So now you give us back our health. As you go back home, you must never turn back or the magic spell is broken. You must never turn back because if you look back and cause quantum probability collapse, maybe that negates the healing effect. And then you must get home very quickly, very quickly. It stresses here. This is dark shit. I, I, this... this would scare me. And then you never tell anyone what you did. No observers. When you do this thing, you are appeasing the jinns and fairies who live on the crossroads. And these jinns and fairies are always around. When you buy a new house, you must also do the same sugar water ritual under the stairs, in the cellar, in the rooftop, in the attic. And if you don't do this when you move into a new house, Istanbul families are scared that the spirits will strike you back at some point. So there. I hope you enjoyed these two and a half hours. We still have only began the book. So we're going to go through it. There will be another episode. Folklore of Istanbul by Ahmet Halit Bayrı. I think nobody living in Istanbul should ever be without one of these books. It's got just so much to teach. 